Ali, directed by Michael Mann, was released in 2001. It didn't do particularly well, either critically or commercially, and has never enjoyed the respect some of Mann's other films do. Which is a shame, because it's an absolute great A piece of filmmaking. If you never saw it, or haven't seen it since it came out, I thoroughly recommend re-watching it. It's a great example of how to use the tools of cinema to make as much impact in as little time as possible. You see, Ali has a lot to get through. The Rumble in the Jungle, The Draft, Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Harry Cosell, Angela Dundee, Joe Fraser, Belinda Ali, George Foreman, Sonny Liston, Vietnam, Don King, and much, much more. So inevitably, in a two and a half hour story, no single element can be given much time. But here's the thing, telling a story isn't reading a list. It's not enough for elements of the story, like character situations and plot points, to just be there. They need to make an impact. What a was your film is just things happening one after the other. Let's take characters as an example. We tend to connect with characters emotionally in a way we don't with plot. But how many films have you watched where the supporting characters are just sort of there? They're not unique, they're not memorable. They turn up, bounce a few lines around, and you've forgotten about them before they're off screen. That brings us to Drew Bundini Brown. Bundini, who is one of Ali's corner men and a sort of fast talking motivator, is a very small part of this story. There are only three short scenes dedicated to Bundini, but Mann uses the medium brilliantly to bring him to life in the short amount of time he has. We first see Bundini hovering around in the gym, but we meet him in the next scene. He comes around a corner out of focus in slow motion, dreamlike. He walks towards us and starts his pitch to Ali. A mix of confidence, life philosophy and religious zeal. I'm called Bundini. Rhymes with Houdini. He was a Jew too. Some people call me Fast Black, some call me Daddy Mac. Gave Sugar Ray Robinson my power for seven years. My voodoo, my magic. He gives only one reason why Ali should employ him. It's what God wants. Now Shorty done sent me here to work for me. Who's Shorty? I call him Shorty. The shots are few and simple. A low angle wide, a mid and a close up. All from a steady tripod mounted camera. Man doesn't cut to Ali's reaction. He doesn't need to. The scene has the upbeat soundtrack prominent under it. And is intercut with Ali training. This gives it a sense of momentum which plays into the epic 10 minute montage which opens the film and which this scene is a part of. Jamie Foxx plays it expertly. Some people call me Fast Black, some call me Daddy Mac. Bundini is smart, fast, maybe brilliant, maybe full of shit, probably both. He feels both real and unique. Can I be in your corner again? He's now part of Ali's team. This scene has taken only 47 seconds. During the next hour, we see Bundini pop up as part of Ali's entourage. Most notably, a couple of minutes later, when he helps Ali deliver part of a poem he wrote for him. Float like a butterfly, sing like a bee. Ah, rumble, young man, rumble. But near the middle of the story, in the second scene dedicated to Bundini, things have gone downhill. Ali and photographer Howard Bingham confront Bundini, now a drug addict. Whatever drove him, he has lost. I know low where the king is going back to his throne, from the root to the fruit. The rhymes is old, Bundini. You need to get some new ones. Where God had a plan, now God doesn't care. God don't care about you. Don't care about me. And all of everything, we don't mean nothing. He don't know us. He's fallen as low as he can go. I sold your belt. I sold your belt to a bubble for $500 on Lennox Avenue. That's how low I did. I can't help it. I got a crazy mind. A lesser director would have shot all of this scene handheld. But man shoots most of it on a tripod and saves the handheld for this angle on Bundini. But free ain't easy. Free is real and realness is a motherfucker. Because the nervous jitter of the handheld camera reflects Bundini's state of mind, especially in contrast to the stable tripod mounted reverse on Ali. 
That bell said you're the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. And I took that $500 and I put it in my arm. Bundini's pathetic state is also evoked by man's use of a mirror to frame Bundini as a small figure next to Ali and Bingham and allows us to see action and reaction in the same shot. I sold your belt to a barber for $500 on Lennox Avenue. That's how low I did. I can't help it. I got a crazy mind. The scene ends as Bundini again makes a pitch to Ali. Take me back. This time he's not successful. We leave him a broken man, literally small, reflected in a mirror in the top right of the frame. In the final scene dedicated to Bundini, he makes his comeback. As Ali is sparring, through his gloves, he notices a small figure appear. The figure jumps closer and approaches, this time right to left. The camera is back to a more stable tripod mount. Hey! Take me back, boss. Unlike in the first scene, Mann cuts in for close-ups on both Ali and Bundini. It's more personal now. The decision whether to take Bundini back after his betrayals holds more weight than the decision to take him on in the first place did. I'm clean. And this is a resurrection. This is God's act. As Bundini stands behind Ali's back begging, Mann puts the camera right in Ali's face with the shallowest depth of field, giving us nothing to look at but Ali's face as he makes his decision. And when he does, the clever simplicity of the writing does the rest. Your hands can't hit it, but your eyes can't see. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Rumble, young man, rumble. Mann and his team took the great script and great acting and used the tools of the medium, handheld contrasted against the steady camera, slow motion and focus, staging and blocking, set design, and tight close-ups and shallow focus, and used them to give this supporting character and these moments impact. This is exceptional filmmaking, and I hope Ali gains the respect it deserves because I can't say I have much of an opinion on any of these characters. They were just there. But after watching Ali, in not much more than five minutes of screen time, I feel like I've met Drew Bondini Brown, and he's told me his story. Thank you for watching. Before you go, please check out this site my friend Chris has made. He's got an eye condition, which is slowly destroying his vision. But he's not one to sit around feeling sorry for himself, so he's made a website where he can talk to you about important blindness related issues like Old man's balls in the gym changing room and Punisher had come out, the, uh, the one with John Travolta and Thomas Jane, not the, uh, not the Dolph Lundgren one. Please check out his videos and maybe even sign up for his newsletter.